uh, for people who disconnect often, you know, right now you can still kind of like report them, et cetera, but to, um, you know, more streamline the process so that uh, our system picks them up and then uh, not only displays the disconnect, but matches these kind of people to each other so that uh, the average player doesn't They're finally have to, to do it. Uh, encounter them online. They're finally going to make a jail system. Want, right? um, rage quitters play so only these rage kind of quitters. Measures and also April 2nd, next patch. Update. Big news, baby. Big news. April 2nd is Tuesday. On April 1st, Monday Night Tekken, we get a new patch. Let's go. Uh, consider is... Uh, we made it a little bit easier to throw escape uh, in certain instances when uh, a player was maybe perhaps for some reason holding down LP, uh, for example. Uh, okay. Then when they tried to input both punch buttons to escape, a, you know, both punch button throw, uh, it wasn't uh, responding according to how we uh, intended. So that's to be corrected. It will break it easier. So less instances where you're holding one button and then trying to buff the other or hitting both buttons at the same time. Those are two things that are good changes. I literally just complained about that last night. Uh, one of the uh, maybe updates after that, uh, he plans to uh, change the throw escapes window, I guess you could say, um, uh, to be a little bit more uh, forgiving for uh, when it hits on a counter hit. Hi. Mm. Yeah, counter throws are really hard to break right now. Hi. Other times when uh, stage gimmicks kind of come into effect, he was uh, particularly mentioning with Devil Jin when you're doing a David twist. Why is it not breaking the floor? He, he up, does, not, does it not break the floor anymore? <laughs> such a king no. Twister, but what he actually meant was when you use like Heaven's Door when you're doing an attack on an opponent who's in a down state. Uh, the damage was uh, a bit more than we'd actually intended because it wasn't scaling properly. So the, the character he's facing oh, currently, boy, um, I'm sure a lot of people are very frustrated by her, uh, I guess we call it a slash kick, you know, the while running uh, oh, three, boy. was two. it three two? Mm -hmm. Three two, I believe, yeah. So basically what we're going to do with this is um, we're changing the properties so that when the first hit, the knee, uh, doesn't connect, then the follow-up attack, uh, it just whiffs, right? So uh, it should be easier to to go around. And then also, the active frames of the the move have also been uh, decreased by three. Like the, the best way to do it is to the left duck because then she stays in front of you. So, you know, basically, you go until right, then, she flies uh, past people you. just had to kind of light left side step and then duck right. Mm -hmm. And it was the timing was quite uh, strict on that. But now we've changed it, so you just have to uh, evade the first hit. But then where did she go? She goes hella past you. Like That's this. bad. Before, you know, even if you evaded the first hit, the second hit would still uh, follow you. But uh, we're going to correct it. That's not good. Wait. So it's not necessarily a balance update per se, but it's uh, fixing the move, uh, which in, as a result kind of changes the balance, right? Can we still size up left duck? Because that's actually better than letting her fly past you. And now he's going to show us some of the other uh, uh, things that he's changed. We'll see what it comes out like, but this doesn't seem like so a please, great fix. Please wait for the full patch notes um, yeah. later on. He's just only showing uh, a few examples. As long as you can punish her after that step, then it's okay. Look at this uh, balance. Balance.調整。はい。え、ま、1.03が次なんですが、さらに次ですかね。さらに次。はい。調整に言及があったんで、ま、その辺で何するかっていうところをちょっとお話ししていけばなと。I don't like when they do it this way. We'll see. <laughs> well, Ma's getting nerfed. <laughs> He's in the top 15 <laughs> character <laughs> usage. <laughs> okay. Well, how does that Shut up! <laughs> Wait, he's not in the rank mode, so, top 15. Um, just going into the buff law. Uh, the, buff law. Uh, we were showing you the raw data in the previous slide, but the, right. So what we're just mm -hmm. basically talking about, as you can see, this is just one point of data, uh, and so we just want to make sure that people don't talk about uh, balance in, in just one perspective because there isn't just one. You can see that uh, perspective changes if you're a beginner, intermediate player, and if you're, you know, a uh, Tekken World Tour competitor, etc. So it's quite different.
So it's very important to notice that we take uh, both, you know, uh, these kind of subjective data uh, and then also objective data, both. So, uh, of course, you know, it's not just about what's on the back end because you know, we realize that maybe you don't feel the same way. There's more subjective things like this character is too strong, etc. Um, and he gave the example of Tekken 7 that people are quite familiar with. If you look at Akuma uh, in the previous game, uh, the everyone was saying he's broken, he's so strong, uh, which would lead you to believe that anyone could just pick him up and, and win, right? But when we looked at the the, the uh, back end, we noticed that uh, the win rate for him was, uh, if you look at the whole Tekken population, was like 40-something. In a lot of cases, it was low 30s, etc., so uh, it really is, is, is difficult to uh, talk about uh, game balance if you're not looking at all these areas. And we realize we can't just ignore the subjective data uh, also. We, we do have to listen to uh, what everyone's experience is in, in first person when they're playing against people online. So we try to keep a good balance uh, and, and to, to do this. Obviously, you can kind of get an idea of how much time it would take to actually get all of this relevant data uh, and the data points together to make a more informed decision. So that's why it's taking a, a, a bit of time, uh, more than you might uh, want uh, to balance the game because we want to do a, a, a perfect job of it. Hi. Hi. So basically what they're saying is Ling Xiaoyu is not getting changed. Also, oh, Evil Japan is this version basically, and then after that, it's going to be changes. Wow, primarily focused on buffing characters. So you can see the schedule from the slide here, uh, roughly. So we have the second update, uh, and then the third update, like you see right now, uh, coming in soon. Uh, and then we'll have Evil Japan. So we're talking about balance, like Nakatsu was mentioning. Uh, the yeah. April second one is just to kind of fix People stuff. People don't that was like unintended. nerfs. Where uh, but the this general, where everyone talks about a game balance, uh, balancing update, uh, that's what's really going to be uh, what powerful. we're doing for the the post Evo Japan one. So you can see it penciled in for May currently. Uh, that's the one that you guys are going to really see as a, a big uh, balance update. You know, polishing some of the features of the game as well. Invalidation of matches if the network and quality falls below certain specified conditions. Mm -hmm. An indication has been added to the versus screen and player match. The display when the stage has been randomly selected. Let's go. And a quit option has been added to the main menu to allow the game to be exited from source other than the options menu. Oh shit, this is the rip slide? <laughs> Let's go. Hey. Hey, they made me smile. How's it going, guys? We're back. <laughs> We're back. Uh, I know sometimes you, you might be matched with an opponent where uh, you both are kind of uh, not really satisfied with the connection quality, and you can both choose, hey, let's just opt out of this match uh, with no penalty. So if you both choose that, you can quit uh, from these different uh, modes we're talking about. Uh, but then also uh, the random select as well. So, uh, you know, I know they this is also something we had in Tekken 7, but immediately uh, look currently if I'm option. playing Nakatsu, and uh, I don't know if he's randomly selected the, the match like maybe he was supposed to or not. So there'll be an actual uh, indicator on the screen. And then last, uh, this is just for the Steam version, but uh, currently you have to go into the options to then go uh, quit the game. So we're going to be adding one more uh, at, at the forefront of the, the main menu uh, for yeah. the Steam version. It's Inviting kind of people to lobbies is a nightmare. Right, they need yeah. to address that at some point, it too. Might be more familiar with just, you know, a standard battle pass. So you're going to have, like, uh, daily missions or weekly missions that, uh, in kind of performing them, then you'll get these, uh, you'll unlock various items in the game. Yes. Okay. Okay. Today, but uh, it's going to be a variety of different things that you can unlock uh, in the game, such as uh, you know character customization What's stuff, that? or maybe uh, parts for your avatar, uh, also uh, the the titles, or even maybe some character <laughs> panel stuff. Yes. Uh -oh, premium tier. <laughs> oh, they're bringing back that Yoshi outfit. That's kind of cool. Costume, yes. And Yoshimitsu. Wait, Cyber Pack available for all playable characters? Oh shit. <laughs> is this going to let me do superhero law or is everyone just going to look like Lars? Legacy cost for Yoshi is tight as fuck. So uh, we'll also be updating the store with some new. Eddie trailer.
does it end with the release date the same day as next week's patch maybe that would be crazy or does eddie come out in may Você vai ver o melhor da capoeira. Oh, yeah, holy shit, well, the well, music, bro. Throwback is fun. This is tight. New challenger! Coração ardente, mas cabeça fria. Eddie Gordo! Gordo! Oh my god. Oh, still has that, huh? Bro. <laughs> Was that a heat smash it's out of game stance? Over for you. Parece que você continua impiedosa como sempre. <laughs> oh, health sweep? Oh, he's got a great life throw too. That move. I'm making count. <laughs> Wait, what is he doing? What the hell? This é o último jogo. Okay. He went to that uh Black Panther Spirit Realm. Full of the uh Capoeira Masters of old. April 1st, early access next week. Coming out official release April 4th. So next week, Eddie's here. Boom. Eu juro pelo meu With the new patch. Não yeah. Vou default 3, default 4. We're close. Those uh, very excited fans who's purchased the Ultimate or Deluxe Editions from the start. Obviously, uh, what's included with that is going to be the, the playable character year one pass. So you'll have uh, early access. Also, if you missed out uh, and got the standard edition at first, uh, you could still you still have a chance if you got the deluxe uh, upgrade as well. So all of these uh, different versions will give you access to that uh, character year one pass, which will give you Eddie. Uh, so will Eddie be playable Eddie, Evil Japan uh, or not? Uh, Good the, question. The second of April or the first of April, depending on your region. John Ning has a big decision to make, maybe. I, I, would, I would bet that Eddie will be playable because it'll be three weeks. It'll be four weeks before. That's, that should be plenty of time. Like sometimes tournaments ban characters when they're that new, but four weeks? I think that's plenty. See that, uh, you know, it's uh, on hit. Uh, obviously, you go into the, it's a heat engager, uh, but even on block, you're still at ni minus nine. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, Devil Jin or Jin's uh, Demon Pop. Yeah, they just throw it out, man. It's cool. It's gonna this? Be doing this uh, down back. Uh, left kick gives you the spinning low kick. You can actually knockdown. use this kind of from mid range uh, as your approach, like the hatchet kicks that Brian right. or uh, that has. So it's kind of like the same use. So those two moves are some of the main tools you want to use for your approach. Uh, and then what your, your next strategy is mm. you're going to want to be uh, transitioning to negativa as, uh, as whenever you can. And uh, Nakatsu was saying Mr. the forward forward left kick is a good way to get into the negativa stance. That's forward forward three. Oh, oh, some relax. It's like a hell sweep rather than the launcher. So slipper kicks is just a hell sweep, not a full launch, I think. <laughs> and so uh, when the kick hits low, uh, it does put you at advantage. So then you're able to uh, press uh, LK twice to do the consecutive kicks. Uh, and when they hit, they put the Eddie in the Mandinga, which is that that kind of icon below the the life gauge, kind of a powered up gauge, a state. My my LK. I'll take the health over the laundry. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's got both. <laughs> oh, crouch grab too on counter. 
And another way is that uh, by doing this uh, forward forward left kick on counter hit, it gives you a few other things that you can do. Uh, he has a uh, throw that he can do on crouching opponents, so that kind of connects. Or also, if he does have some sort of uh, manding, uh, you know, the stage one or stage two, uh, gives him another follow up option as well. Well, he's got different stages of his power too. John Ning's gonna win Evo Japan. One important thing to note is that from the negative, the negativa when Nakatsu is doing the uh, double left kicks, uh, the first one has to clean the hit for the follow up to to actually hit. So if the first hit doesn't clean hit and uh, they block the second, then that leaves uh, Eddie at minus 13 uh, and open for a punish. Right. Minus 13 high, otherwise you can maybe duck it. If it's a jailing string, that would be so stupid. You can see kind of like the back and forth between you and your opponent uh, as a result. So you can of course uh, choose to go directly into Bandanera, but that puts you at uh, great risk. So one of the options is to perform his slash kick, you know, the while running three, uh, which will transition into Bandanera. So you take the advantage with that uh, LP, uh, then you hit them with those leg kicks, which then again powers up one stage of the uh, Mandinga. And you can see from Banana Era, you have uh, a few offensive oh, tools, the but that? then if someone's trying to uh, crush that, backswing blow out a handstand with an attack, he also has handstand, a power backswing. Crush from that stance. So another kind of a fine detail uh, to share with you all is that his chance, his stance has changed a bit. If you recall Tekken 7 and previously uh, Eddie, when he was hit from the neg negativa, it put him in kind of, kind of a down state. So uh, even if you were successful in your def defense against him, uh, you were limited in options. So it's actually treated as a standing uh, stance. Uh, Relax so, is treated as uh, standing? If you punish him, actually you have access to a lot more uh, options offensively. Wait. That's big. So you can hop kick him now. <laughs> so as Eddie is uh, oh my God, I'm not a because he is in the standing technically during the negativa, uh, this is a big change from Tekken 7. He also has options though. He can guard from uh, or block from negativa, which he couldn't. So we streamlined him so that you don't have to remember all these kind of special circumstances when fighting Eddie uh, to make him more like the other characters. Why is that a good thing? To explain a little bit more about this new mechanic, the man mandinga, I think it's called mandinga if you read it in Portuguese, perhaps. Um, so just you know, what is this? And uh, so Nakats is just saying it's a way that you power up your character and gives you even more options from Bananera, the handstand. Hey. So there are two level two? levels, so Nakatsu is going to get into level 2 and then have uh, Hameko get into level 1 just so you can compare. So from the, the handstand, you can do this uh, kind of low mid attack combo to uh, open up your opponent if you're in this uh, powered up state. Show us the level 1 version. Ah, it doesn't knock you notice down. with the just the first power up, mm. it, it doesn't down your opponent. So same move, but different properties. Mm. Yeah, less damage, less gray health, or more gray health actually in the level two version because it gets more damage. And the difference between this is that uh, uh, with this mechanic, as compared to other characters and other mechanics, is that yeah, uh, level, you're not using stays. some kind of a, a gauge, or it doesn't deplete itself. Uh, you keep the st powered up status. And so uh, the idea is that uh, although you're powered up and you're not depleting it, it's just for that round. So you're powered up for the remainder of the round. 
and uh, this gives you even more access uh, to tools from uh, the handstand, so you don't have to go back to Negativa to open up your opponent necessarily. And uh, Nakatsu was just showing off, uh, previously you had that kind of low mid combination, but there was another one where he hits a mid uh, single attack right now, right, he just did, uh, that actually has aerial jump status. Yeah, Important plus, part plus uh, of this is that uh, even if blocked, Eddie is uh, plus frames uh, on that move when he's in the power-up state. Uh, and there's a yeah, difference uh, between minus the state to one and state to two. So you can see the difference there. Okay. And so uh, Hameko has mentioned that just in previous uh, iterations that the handstand was uh, a bit weak to kind of low, maybe uh, uh, um, trying to find that non-vulgar uh, term, this the uh, crouch dick punch, jab. I guess you could say. <laughs> um, <laughs> But for this one, the if dick you read jab. your opponent you dick uh, jab doing him, that, bro. you can then do that uh, mid kick that he was just showing off. I wonder if you can step that. That seems like a move that would be linear. In the particular move he's showing now is a uh, down back uh, right kick, right kick. It's a very famous Kakuero hmm. technique. It, it's uh, actually even featured in uh, Batuko, which is a, a famous uh, manga here in Japan that uh, covers Kakuero. Pretty cool. Uh, Eddie. Uh, the the base is that he has these very flashy kicks that you can do with just a simple Bro. uh you this know, character seems more like warong now press. and they kind of flow together like a dance right and so it's very uh Mr. kind President. of satisfying for even beginners I might play this character. who had their first uh time with eddie because like eddie is seems different enough that he's interesting to learn now like before i didn't want to pick him up because the character seemed like he had so much depth that it required someone who's like an expert on the character to play him still but now it seems like he's more of a starting out from scratch again so uh nakatsu is currently just pre pressing lk only uh two two times gets you into the negativa stance and then from there some more presses with the l kick uh the left kick will uh complete the combo and oh when he's yeah finished, he gets a powered up uh, katarina Majima. style nice all right, I'm an Eddie main. Let's go. When you're in the heat state, you can do this one where he uh, trans transitions to the Benanera. Benanera. Mm. So, uh, Whoa. on block, it transitions into the Bananera stance, uh, but on Bananera. hit, it, you can follow it up with a combo. Another one is if you perform a quarter circle forward and right kick, uh, oh, he performs this, this kick. That kick is crazy. And so in the heat state, he gains access to two of these uh, techniques that make it easier for him to go on the fence. Motion inputs, I'm out. <laughs> I wouldn't use them anyway. All I'm going to do is hit heat burst, heat smash, baby. Gehero uh, Explosive, I believe. Uh, Gehiro being the kind of the, the martial arts name of Sasamori-kun who, who did the animation for this. So that's basically, basically the options he has uh, at his disposal in the heat state. Right. Heat smash out of handstand? Can you do heat smash out of relax? I think that's what he's testing. Yeah. So you can do it out of both handstand and relax. Another interesting characteristic of Eddie is that uh, he has access to the same heat smash from both Bananera and Negativa stances. Yeah. So you can continue up uh, your pressure. So he's saying that uh, we you know, be able his, to do this. his uh, strategy and probably you know the basic strategy for this character previous iterations was kind of from long range. You want to tend to poke uh, with the 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 fight got the the kind of uh, round the round kick uh, or other kind of long reaching techniques. And then when your opponent tries to rush in to close the distance, uh, smack him with that elbow and, mm. and fish for a counter hit. Wow, counter down for two? Look at that. That's sick. So, what Hamiko is trying to say is that like the standard tools you used in the previous iterations aren't going to uh, get you that much damage this not time. not the same character. I like the elbow he's just showing on counter hit doesn't lead to a combo, but yeah. uh, your opponent can actually uh, side roll. So, uh, if you want to use Eddie effectively, you, can, you want you can to see uh, adjust upset about your strategies that. this time around. It's not his character anymore, bro. It's a new Eddie. This is Jordan. 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 Double kick here. That, uh, it's many just missed while he was crouching. Part of their offense uh, is now uh, a high attack. So you can duck it. <laughs> oh, no wonder he ducked it. I was like, what the hell? Still goes the combo, though, if it hits. Yeah. Oh. 
This character seems, honestly, this character seems designed for new players, not veteran players. But we'll see. I think, like I said, mm. the fact that his offense seems to flow more like Huarong now mm. uh, means that and, uh, he'll still have potential, you know, so, especially in Tekken uh, 8. Just again, he's not, gonna, he's not like the poke heavy character that many, many people are, are used to from past installments. Uh, so, you know, you can't rely on those moves. But Nakatsu just mentioned that, well, yeah, I mean, we did, we kind of drastically overhauled the character because we want uh, to show a, a more streamlined character and uh, such he has more different ways of enjoying the character. Mm. It's because Christie's coming back as classic Eddie. Honestly, I had the same thought. I was like, the fact that Eddie's so different now leaves the door open for them to bring back Christie as the original Eddie style. And so, uh, Hamiko was just saying one of the things he relied on was that uh, it was really quick to, to do those kind of double spinning kicks uh, from a sidestep, uh, where the animation is a bit different this time around. It's a little bit slower uh, on the startup. Uh, but that said, that's because Hamiko uh, sounds know, like he's complaining. He has a lot more other improved areas, and he's been streamlined to be closer to the other characters. Like uh, Nakatsu was showing off, the back step is not that uh, super fast uh, back step it used to be. But uh, in return, he gets a, a better sidestep, which he d didn't really have in, in past installments. And there's risk to some of the moves that used to evade and uh, counterattack from uh, previous installments. So, oh my god. Mm. That's not a regular hit launcher either? Hi. Like a uh, free crowd grab though. Kind of attack he's doing yeah. now doesn't go into a uh, combo like it used to, but you can uh, follow it's a heat up with engager a, now. Uh, crouching so that's a heat engager. <laughs> Kyoki's like this character's <laughs> ass. <laughs> Down for two, no counter launch. Size of three plus four, so both high. Down back one plus two. You're gonna want to kind uh, of uh, reevaluate. Uh, the is a heat engager not a launcher? When you pick up this character, uh, negativa low. Is not a launcher, just a knockdown. So only the mid is the launcher you got to worry for. Mm. Mm. Poor Hamiko, he's got to sit up here like, oh man, I'm so excited. I can't wait to mash three or four. And then I'm gonna manjinga them. And in heat, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna hope that I already had manjinga before. So Nakat, uh, Nakata is just reiterating that those kind of pokes and the, the relatively safe uh, offensive tools you had before. Uh, maybe aren't as effective this time, but uh, in re return, he's gotten uh, a lot more, uh, you know, uh, more high-powered attacks. Uh, Definitely more uh, power. They're brand new for this one. Yeah, he's more powerful. <laughs> Less uh, bullshit, it feels like. But probably new bullshit. Mm. I'm a ghost face. <laughs> you, <laughs> did you see his mouth right there? Oh man, I hope I didn't block the camera and accident. Oh no. Poor, poor Hamako, bro. I'm sorry, Hamako. I'm sorry, John Ding. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I just talked to Spirogen and he was so hyped at uh, PAX Arena this past weekend for Eddie returning. It's interesting too because I even told Spiro, like, you know, I think I might try him this time because he looks like they simplified him. I'm sure Spear will still play him. Even John Ding, I think this like their character. They're gonna try him and play him and make try to make more so, chance of Rip getting hired for TWT commentary. I have zero contracts, zero guarantee of any events. So we'll see. Well, you know, we're we're quite excited to see what happens with uh, all the competitors coming out to Evo Japan this year. Uh, I believe it's 1,200 in, in something. Which is uh, slightly down from last year, but that might be just because uh, this year I think is the first year Evo's charging uh, admission for their event, so that might have something to do with it. Uh, that said, in Street Fighter is going to be amazing yeah. too, right? Four thousand and some yeah. players. Oh my so, God! Uh, this year's Evo. Why did he bring that up? Be amazing, and we hope you all come <laughs> tune in. Why did he bring that up? He's like, yeah, hey, Tekken's numbers are down. Uh, we have 1,200, but it's probably because people have to pay to enter. By the way, Street Fighter has 4,000 entrants, so that should be cool. I'll give you guys the full recap and everything, all right? Here we go. Uh, with no video demonstration, you guys can just listen if you guys are watching this on YouTube later. 
they're going to do more bans and stuff. They've already done that. They're doing, they're fixing the penalties, right? Because obviously the disconnect rate was incorrectly calculated, but they were correctly calculated on the back end. So they have that data and they're going to put that in later. Uh, but they're also going to reset it with this next patch. So everyone's going to start from zero and then it's going to start calculating. There is going to be a pluggatory, they called it. So plugger purgatory. So basically people who are disconnected from matches will be matched up again people who are disconnected from matches. So they'll be battling each other, right? The thing that's confusing about this to me is that they had a lot of talking about, you know, it's a P2P game, so we don't really know who actually left sometimes. So we just want to make sure uh, that we know correctly before we ban people and do this and that and this and the other. But then they're going to have plugger purgatory. So doesn't this mean that if they don't really know who left, that people who did not disconnect and got disconnected on might be matched up with people who are pluggers? Seems a little sus. Seems a little sus if they're not 100% sure about that and that that's what they want to do, right? Because otherwise, if they know who disconnects, you could just give the guy who got disconnected on a win. And then they get their points and they move on with their life. I don't know. Uh, it seems to be the simplest way to keep people happy, but they're doing a lot of work to do a lot of bands. They are have their reporting system and all that stuff going on, and that's kind of their thing right now. Uh, they are adding a bad connection option now. So after the match is done, you can say like, hey, this match wasn't good. And if the other guy also says this match wasn't good connection wise, then it just nulls it out. So that's going to be available in rank and everything too. Uh, They're going to have finally a random select indicator for the stages. So when you're playing in a lobby now, you can tell if somebody actually picked the stage random or not because that is a TWT rule and you want to see that for tournaments. So we've been running our own tournaments and we haven't been able to enforce that until now. So that's a great addition. They're also adding a quit option to the Steam edition of the game. So the quit option is basically going to be so you don't have to go to options and then exit game. So something that, you know, I've been asking for for a while. So all those things were good. Uh, they talked about how they're going to balance the game. They said that there's going to be balancing now from all of the data they collected from online. So they showed a graph of everybody, like the top 14 characters in all modes and the top 14 characters that are above Tekken God. And they showed these lines connecting all of them. Say like, look, we get a bunch of data points and this is how we're going to, you know, balance for everybody, not just the top tier people, whatever. And we're also paying attention to Twitter and this and that. So it sounds like they're trying to balance it for everyone. I don't know that I necessarily like this approach to game balancing, but it's how they've done it in the past. I, I don't personally uh, think that it was very helpful across the end half of Tekken 7. So the fact that it's continuing here is a little concerning. Um, but we'll see what it ends up being, right? And as far as the patches, there's going to be a patch with Eddie Gordo's release on Monday, the April 1st, April 2nd uh, is when that's going to be. And when that happens, uh, that patch is going to be primarily bug fixes. They're going to release the patch notes shortly. I'll go over that in a separate video probably. But then also they talked about on Monday, the Uniqlo store is going away. So go get your free shirts while they're still there in the Tekken shop if you want of those things. Um, but balancing again really quickly, I think that there's a lot that people want to actually balance, not just bug fixes. And when they do do it, it's going to be in May after Evil Japan. And they said that that balance patch is going to focus on buffs for the characters that aren't shining as brightly. And there will be a couple nerfs as well. So does that mean like the mid-tier characters, which is the majority of the game, are not going to really be touched? And they're just going to buff up the characters that everyone says is bottom tier, like the bears, like Kuma is going to get buffs, you know, based off of usage and everything. Uh, or Ling Xiaoyu, who wasn't on those charts uh, as being like in the top 16. She's underutilized. Maybe maybe she needs buffs, you know, um, because she's not shining as brightly as Dragunov and uh, King or whatever, you know. I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. So personally, I feel like this early patch you probably should just tone down the top tiers and let the game rock. But it sounds like they want to do a little bit of both Mr. and maybe Mr. President. push people all it's higher too. So we'll see. You know, um, there was a lot of talk at the end of Tekken 7 about power creep and how it's gotten too wild. So uh, it sounds like we might be headed in that direction for Tekken 8 as well. Um, other than that, Evil Japan, they hinted, is probably going to be where we hear from them next about the next character reveal, which makes a lot of sense because... Coming after Evil Japan will be the May patch that has the actual balance changes. Uh, they showed off a lot of Eddie Gordo, and Eddie Gordo 
is going to be very different. A lot of his core tools like down for two counter it, uh, relax, sweep, launcher, gone, size 50 plus four, high attacks now. He will still be good. Down back one plus two is not a launcher. It is a heat engager basically because it's got a crouch grab. His crouch grab takes off gray life. So a lot of stuff like that. And the character will be out soon, so we'll see more about that. <laughs> Let's take a look at these notes. There's a lot of notes. Lots and lots and lots of notes. All right, let's see. So that's it. You know, not not a lot of changes, honestly. Um, primarily a lot of, as they describe, bug fixes. It's crazy because they wrote so much stuff, right? I think to, for me, the biggest change... Why the hell did I get Japanese? Uh, <laughs> the biggest change for me is that they fixed the stage bug on Descent into Subconscious. Uh, you know, there's a couple other things that there are like minor changes. The throw system uh, change is going to be pretty decent, I think. Yoshimitsu a little bit changed. These stages might perform a little bit better, which is a nice buff. They didn't mention performance anywhere, but I'm hoping that that's what it is. Uh, then there's also, um, for the most part, other than the, you know, just the positional stuff with walls and everything, Azucena's running 3-2 uh, has been changed now so that the second it doesn't come out on whiff, uh, so we'll see if it's more punishable now if you get the sidesteps or if she goes too far with flying past you anyway. So it might be okay for her still. It might not be. We'll have to just wait for the patch and see what that's like. Um, other than that, I don't think there's any super significant changes, right? Like uh, Devilgen losing the Heaven's Gate follow-up um, from his um, floor break stages on the end of the resets. That's like not the end of the world, right? Dragnov. His throw up for one plus two doesn't get the free follow up afterwards. Uh, Reyna has more recovery after her throws. Dragonov's heat smash will now not track you crazy. Uh, Fang's down back three is potentially one of the bigger ones. It's potentially one. We don't know how big it'll be, but the fact that he will not evade mids as much as he did before with it probably means uh, that the counter down back three will be less effective. Uh, so it may not be major, but it will definitely hurt Fang a little bit. So we will see how that one holds up over time. Uh, other than that, was there anyone else that was pretty significant? Because he has one with two being fixed is probably a good fix. Uh, King didn't really get hurt or anything, so he's fine. Um, more, he's actually kind of fixed in a lot of ways. That was pretty decent. Panda got some nice buffs to kind of bring her in line with Kuma a little bit better. Uh, Lars is pretty much the same. Law, forward three plus four is now possible out of the... PSS before it could have been Legend Kick or Dragon Cannon. Now should be fine. Uh, double Flip got a tiny nerf, which is not a big deal. I think that's more for like a Kuma wall combo or something. And then uh, DSS Forward 2 can now no longer do the run up grab off his Plink input. So I'm pretty sure that's what this change is describing. I'll test it out when the game actually gives us the patch in a couple days. Uh, Lee got a couple of tiny nerfs, nothing major. Uh, Leroy down forward one, tiny buff to size seven, down forward one four, basically. Mm, I think that's roughly it. Yeah, everything else is, is pretty minor, right? Nothing super substantial. Shaheen down back two one is going to whiff less on second, so that's a decent buff for him. Um, I th Yeah, I think that's basically it. Oh, I didn't see a Xiaoyu change. Her parry adjusted opponent's facing direction to be forward when parrying the right kick attack. Fixed an issue where back facing opponent down. One can make contact with the opponent's back render it unblockable. So, small nerf there. Situational. A lot of these things are very, very situational, right? So, not too crazy. The Yoshi change while he's spinning from Dragonflies appreciated. So, now you can actually duck it and it'll jail you standing so you don't have to worry about making that kind of input error. And Zafina got a little buff there because now she takes less damage on herself. So that is a basically one minute recap. It feels like about all the patch notes There's a bunch in here, but not much that's substantial. A lot of it is just to fix like situations where you're right next to a wall or by a corner or something. And the game would like freak out and characters go through each other and that sort of thing happening. Right. So the next patch will be in May after this one that comes out next week. So in May, we'll get version 1.04, which will focus primarily on buffing characters who have been able to fully showcase their uniqueness. However, adjustments to certain moves that exhibit significant strength will also be made. So that's the patch we're all waiting for. 
it's like a month and a couple of days away probably. So that is it. Patch 1.03. There was a lot, but really a little. So that's it. Enjoy that one. YouTube. Have a good one. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys next time. Boom. Easy so easy. Boom. Boom.